In this example, I need to determine if the following equations define y as a function of x. Before I look at the equations, I need to review a couple of things. The definition of a function says, a function is a correspondence between a first set, called the domain, to a second set called the range, such that each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. To determine if an equation defines y as a function of x, I need to solve for y and test to see if each x value corresponds to at most one y value. So if every x value yields one y value, then the equation defines y as a function of x. But if any x value yields two or more y values, then the equation does not define y as a function of x. So for each equation, I'm going to have to solve for y and test to see if each x value corresponds to at most one y value. So looking at my first equation of 2x plus 3y equals 1, Solving it for y, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I just get 3y equals negative 2x plus 1. Unlike terms, can't combine them. And now to get y by itself, I'm going to divide each term by 3. These threes reduce, I get y equals negative two-thirds x plus one-third. Now if I plug in an x value, I'm only going to get one y value because I'm going to take the x value, multiply it by negative two-thirds and add one-third. So let's just pick an x value to check this out. So I'm just going to pick when x equals 1. y is going to equal negative 2 thirds times x, which is 1, plus 1 third. Negative 2 thirds times 1 is negative 2 thirds, plus 1 third is negative 1 third. So one x value gave one y value. So I know that in example A, this equation defines y as a function of x. Now the second equation is x plus y squared equals 9. Solving it for y, the first thing I'm going to have to do is subtract x from both sides. So I'm going to get y squared equals 9 minus x, or I could have written negative x plus 9. Unlike terms, can't combine. And then how do you undo squaring? You're going to have to take the square root of both sides, which is going to give you y equals, but don't forget you must put this plus or minus in front of this square root of 9 minus x. Now, looking at this plus or minus, if I put one x value in, how many y values am I going to get out? Two. Let's just show this with picking a value for x, and let's pick x equals 5. So y would equal plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x, which is 5. So I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 5 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so it's going to give me plus or minus 2. So I know that 1x value will give me two y values. So we know, for example, 2, this equation does not define y as a function of x. In the next example, the equation is y equals the square root of x plus 9. Notice this equation is already solved for y. 
And it might look similar to this problem down here, but notice there is no plus or minus. We know y equals the positive square root of x plus 9. So if I put in an x value for which this function is defined, I'm only going to get out one y value. So let's just pick an x value. Let's pick x equals 7. So I get y equals the square root of x, which is 7 plus 9. So y equals the square root of 7 plus 9 is 16. What's the square root of 16? It's 4. So 1x value gave me 1y value. So this equation defines y as a function of x. In the next example, the equation is x squared plus y equals 9. So solving for y, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. And I get y equals 9 minus x squared, unlike terms, can't combine. And if I plug in one x value, how many y values are you going to get out? Just one. Let's show this by picking x equals 1. y would equal 9 minus 1 squared, which is 9 minus 1 squared is 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. So 1x gives me 1y. So in this example, we know that the equation defines y as a function of x. And before I go on to my last two examples, I want to point out one thing. If you have y raised to the second power, or in fact any even exponent, in solving for y, you will always get this plus or minus, and it will not be a function. But it is okay to have x raised to an even exponent. Now looking at the last two examples, in part e, my equation is 2y minus 5 equals the absolute value of x. Solving for y, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And I'm going to get 2y equals the absolute value of x plus 5, dividing each term by 2. I'm going to get y equals the absolute value of x divided by 2 plus 5 halves. Well, the absolute value of a number is just one number. And then I divide that by 2 and add it to 5 halves. I'm just going to get one value. So it looks like 1x is going to give me 1y. Let's just pick a value. Let's have x equals 1 y equals the absolute value of 1 divided by 2 plus 5 halves. Well, the absolute value of 1 is 1, so I'm going to get 1 half plus 5 halves, which is 6 halves, which is 3. So 1x gave me 1y value. So we know that this equation here defines y as a function of x. In part f, I have the absolute value of y equals 3x plus 7. It's almost solved for y, but not quite. Well, if the absolute value of a quantity equals a number, we know that that quantity can equal this number or its opposite. So we know that y can equal 3x plus 7 or y can equal the opposite of 3x plus 7. So 1x is going to give me two different y values. And to show this, let's just pick an x value. doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick x equals 2. So I know the absolute value of y equals 3 times x, which is 2, plus 7 
plus 7. So the absolute value of y equals 3 times 2 is 6 plus 7. So the absolute value of y equals 6 plus 7 is 13. Now if the absolute value of y equals 13, then y could equal 13 or y could equal negative 13. Since the absolute value of 13 is 13 and the absolute value of negative 13 is 13. So we know for this last example that this equation does not define y as a function of x.